The eleventh in the videos on simultaneous equations introduces the row echelon form. Previous videos then demonstrated that both a matrix inverse and Cramer's rule can be used to solve linear simultaneous equations. However, both of these methods are very inefficient for large numbers of unknowns. And consequently, we need to consider more numerically efficient methods that could deal with tens and hundreds or perhaps even thousands of unknowns. This video introduces the row echelon form, which is one of the tools used by efficient solvers. Let's look at two linear simultaneous equations then. When solving two equations in two unknowns, the basic technique is to eliminate one variable. So here you can see what we might do is add row 1 to row 2 to eliminate x. If we do that, we end up with this, 5y equals 4. Now, write one of the original equations alongside the new equation and then put this in matrix form. So if we do that, you can see we've got an original equation and the new equation. And here's the matrix form, and the key thing is to look at what does that matrix form look at. The matrix is in effect triangular. If you see, it's upper triangular because it's got a zero in the bottom left corner. So you'll notice the technique of eliminating variables has in effect made the matrix notation give a triangular form. And we can solve now for y and then use this to find x. Let's look now at solving three equations. Again, the typical technique is to use the equations to eliminate one variable at a time and then use back substitution. So again, we'll illustrate this. First thing we might do is add row 1 to row 2 to eliminate z. And then add 4 times row 1 to row 3, also to eliminate z, and we'll end up with these two equations. So we've now reduced the three equations to 2 and eliminated the variable z. What will you do next? We could try subtracting twice row 1 from row 2, and that will eliminate y. And there you see what we get, 14x equals 9. So we can now solve for x using this expression, and then put that into one of these two to solve for y, and then put x and y into one of these to solve for z. Now why have we shown that slowly? We're going to use the same expressions on this slide here, but now what we're going to do is look at how this appears when we put it in matrix form. So what we've done is we've taken the last equation, the 14x equals 9, we've taken 1 of the two equations, and here I've taken the 6x plus 10y equals 17, and we've taken one of the original three equations, x plus 2y plus z equals 3. Now what do you notice about the matrix you've got left? Can you see that it's triangular, in this case lower triangular, because we've got all these zeros in the top. So what should you be noticing? The variable elimination technique creates a matrix form which is in effect upper or lower triangular. So your solution technique has actually said, how do I make my matrix of coefficients upper or lower triangular? Consider a set of equations represented as follows then. And you'll see in this particular case, I've made the matrix upper triangular straight away. I can now solve these variables very, very quickly. So you'll see I can use the third row to solve for z by inspection. Having solved for z, I can now use the second row to solve for y, and having solved for y, I can use the first row to solve for x. So what do you notice? If your equations are in upper or lower triangular form, then the back substitution method of solving the variables is very quick, and in essence, you could consider it trivial. So the proposed methodology that we're going to use is say if, a big if here, we can represent our linear simultaneous equations using the form x equals b, so the matrix form, where the matrix A is upper or lower triangular, then 
the equations can be solved very efficiently. And you'll see with this one here again, we've got all these zeros, so we've got an upper triangular form. So here we could use the fourth row to solve for W, and having got W, we can use the third row to solve for Z, and having got Z and W, we can use the second row to solve for Y, and having got Y, we can then use the first row to solve for x. So hopefully you're all convinced as soon as we get this triangular form, solving for the unknowns is very quick and simple. So the summary observation. If we can represent our equations using upper or lower triangular form, the equations can be solved very efficiently. And the key thing to remember going forward is this form here is known as a row echelon form. And efficient solvers will try and modify your equations to get this row echelon form. So in summary, this brief resource introduced the row echelon form. If the linear simultaneous equations in matrix form have a triangular matrix, the unknowns can be solved very efficiently. And a popular numerical technique, therefore, is to force the A matrix into triangular form. And we'll start introducing this in the next video.